Parallel storytelling is a narrative method in which the writer connects elements of the story, such as the themes or, or characters, for the use of multiple storylines. There are plenty of shows, movies, video games, and other forms of media that successfully pull off parallel storytelling in their plot lines, but very few are able to perfect it. Hi, my name is Pancakes, and today I will go over the masterful parallel storytelling in Vinland Saga with the three main characters. Thorfinn, Askeladd, and Canute, as each of their storylines cover themes such as loss, hatred, and revenge. So before I get into this video, I just want to go over some disclaimers. Uh, I will be covering heavy spoilers for both season one and two of Vinland Saga. However, anime watchers, you have no need to worry as there will be no manga spoilers in this video, mainly because I haven't read the manga. So I can't really spoil it. Also, since I won't be referencing anything that happens in Vinland Saga past whatever happens in Season 2, there's probably some points and information relating to this topic that are from the later parts of the manga that I won't be able to cover in this video, since, you know, I don't know they exist. Also, I just want to clear up some things about parallel storytelling before I start explaining everything. So basically, in parallel storytelling, while multiple storylines can share similar themes, it doesn't necessarily mean the storylines perfectly match up with one another. Like, imagine the metaphorical storylines being more of a two-way street and less of a racetrack. Also, hi! Uh, I'm still very new to content creating, so I appreciate you being here and watching my video. And if you have the time, please subscribe, watch my other videos, and leave a like and comment. It would mean so much to me. And also, please check out my other social medias. I am queen with a K pancakes on pretty much everything, so please follow me. So, Vinland Saga is an anime and manga that takes place in Europe during the Viking era. The plot mainly focuses on Thorfinn, who as a young boy witnesses the murder of his father by the hands of Askeladd. For the next 11 years, Thorfinn, fully fueled by rage and hatred, works of Askeladd and his group in order to get the opportunity to honorably get his revenge. This leads to Askeladd's group getting involved with the war that's going on, and they have to watch after a Danish prince, aka Prince Canute, who is a bit of a shy and a little fearful guy. You know, he's just a little guy. Eventually, Askeladd kills Canute's dad, Canute kills Askeladd, and Thorfinn ends up in slavery and has to rethink his life on a farm. Just another Monday in Europe. So that's just a quick and loose overview of the plot of season one of Vinland Saga, since I'm kind of assuming that if you're still watching this, you know the plot already, and since that's not what my video is about, uh, I'm just gonna keep going. But since we got that out of the way, uh, let's get into the main topic of this video. The parallel storytelling that's shared between Thorfinn, Askeladd, and Canute. So I'm gonna start off with talking about the similar themes shared between all three of their storylines. Those themes being revenge, death of a father figure, the cycle of violence, and growth. All three of these characters experience a cycle of violence that was started after the loss of their fathers or father figure. Most interestingly, these three all had their father figures killed by Askeladd, with Askeladd killing his own dad, Thorfinn's dad Thors, and both Ragnar and King Swain, Canute's father figure and biological father respectively. Askeladd, a true motherfucker and father killer. Despite all of their cycles of violence being triggered by dad death, there are two other factors to their own violent acts, and that's hatred and revenge. Each of them experience their own form of hatred that plays a different role in their violent action. Askeladd hatred forms as a young child due to his mistreatment of his mother by his own father, but buries the anger in order to get closer to his father. Eventually, Askeladd is able to enact his revenge against his father by killing him in the middle of the night unexpectedly. Thorfinn's hatred develops after Askeladd assassinates Thors in the beginning of season one, and his cycle of violence begins shortly after making his first kill. Thorfinn then spends the rest of the season as a member of Askeladd's group in order to be able to get revenge in the name of his father, father in an honorable duel. Canute's hatred begins to rise as he becomes dissatisfied with the world around him, such as when Askeladd kills an entire village in order to gain supplies and shelter. It's further increased after the death of his retainer, Ragnar, and even further increased after Askeladd reveals that he was the one that killed Ragnar. His cycle of violence begins after the death of King Swain, who was fucking decapitated by Askeladd. After some hesitation, Canute is able to kill 
Askeladd, which allows him to start his path of bloodshed to becoming king and leading into season two. Now, I know right now it just seems like I'm just repeating myself with this pattern of, oh, their fathers were killed and then they killed a lot of people and then something something hatred, something something revenge. So in order to make my point clear as possible, I'm going to go into all of them separately. I'm going to start off by comparing Askeladd to Thorfinn and Canute. Since Askeladd is dead by season two, I just think it's easier to get any comparisons relating to Askeladd out of the way before getting into the big boy comparison later. Also, while I'm still talking about Askeladd on his own, I just wanted to say a few things. In my Bumblebee video, someone in my comment section implied that if you like a character that is a villain or does bad things, then you yourself are a bad person. So I just wanted to say that if liking Askeladd is a crime, then lock me up. I'm not gonna gush on Askeladd for too long, so all I will say is that he's the best boy and low-key kinda hot. You know, in like a older gentleman kinda way. So like this video if you also think Askeladd is kinda hot. <laughs> Askeladd and Thorfinn's storylines together are probably the least parallel in terms of narrative events, but they most certainly do connect with one another. How both handle hatred is one of their greatest contrasts. Thorfinn's entire life for 11 years was purely controlled by how much he despises Askeladd and how badly he wants revenge. Dude literally wakes up every morning and thinks to himself, what keeps me going in life? Oh yeah, I hate that fucker. Thorfinn is so blinded by his hatred for Askeladd that he is willing to do anything in order to be given the opportunity to kill Askeladd to the point where he's killed so many people in his quest to kill Askeladd that he's become numb to murdering others. While Askeladd, on the other hand, rarely lets his anger have control over himself and his actions. He much rather prefers to manipulate his enemies into either a sense of comfort or by manipulating his enemies with their own emotions. He does this very often to Thorfinn, who he gets to do dangerous tasks by promising to have a duel only to use Thor's death as a means to cause Thorfinn to act out during the duel in order for Askeladd to win against him. To add on to this, every one of these essential characters that he's killed, his method of ending their lives is by some form of surprise, like killing his father in the middle of the night, or trapping Thors and having his men snipe him, uh, leading Ragnar into the woods to kill him. The only real exception is King Swain, but like, bro is kind of like dead at that point anyways, so. Thorfinn on the other hand, despite hating Askeladd with all of his being, refused to kill Askeladd in any other way besides beating him in an honorable duel. This is because Thorfinn believes that if he kills Askeladd in any other way in the name of Thors, then he would be dishonoring his father. Which is kind of weird because he just becomes okay with killing other people and doesn't see how he could be dishonoring Thors for doing so, but I guess he views those deaths as more of a means to an end. Plus he was like a kid, so like, he probably wasn't thinking that deeply about it. This is why Thorfinn didn't kill Askeladd in his sleep when he had the chance, which Askeladd the next day taunts Thorfinn for not doing. Only for us as the audience to learn that Askeladd killed his own father in this manner. This goes back to how Thorfinn and Askeladd were individually raised. Askeladd never really had anyone in his life that could have instilled morals into him at a young age, like how Thorfinn did which caused Askeladd to have matured at a young age and become brutally calculated. While Thorfinn was taught valuable lessons about morals, he was still too young to understand them as well as too young to understand the long-term consequences that vengeful actions could have. This is how Thorfinn ended up as ruthless while still wanting to retain honor when challenging Askeladd, while Askeladd is able to be tactically gruesome. The last thing to touch on these two is their kind of weird relationship. Despite the fact that Thorfinn despised Askeladd with all of his being, his obsession with killing Askeladd kind of caused Thorfinn to be strangely protective of Askeladd in order to make sure he didn't die in any other way that wasn't the one that he had planned for him. Thorfinn willingly charged towards Thorkell, even after getting his ass kicked by him in London, just so he can make it clear that he's the one that's going to kill Askeladd. Even after the fight, when Thorkell is distracted by Canute's speech, Thorfinn tries to get Askeladd to get up and leave. Askeladd also had a bizarre connection with Thorfinn, being a weird mentor of some sorts. He was willing to give Thorfinn tips on how to take down Thorkell and even gave praise to Thorfinn after completing certain orders that he gave to him, 
such as when Askeladd had Thorfinn send a signal to ransack a town. You know, it's like when your dad gives you a praise for beating up your school bully in a fight. Only, instead of being suspended, you now have to deal with the horrors ca of causing potential deaths of hundreds for the rest of your life. From a viewer's perspective, Thorfinn's anger is misplaced as Askeladd only killed Thors because he was being paid to do so by Floki. To Askeladd, killing Thors was just another job, and nothing more. But to Thorfinn, Askeladd murdering Thors meant everything. Yet in Askeladd's final moments, he tried to urge Thorfinn to get his revenge that he so desperately desired and even apologized for making Thorfinn wait so long. But Thorfinn refused as he still wanted to take him out in a duel. Askeladd then questions what will Thorfinn do after he's gone, urging him to not hold on to his violent intentions and saying he has what it takes to be a true warrior something Thorfinn had always looked up to in his father for being. After the death of Askeladd at the end of season one, at the hands of Canute, Thorfinn became empty inside as the hatred that had been building up for over 10 years suddenly had nowhere to be directed to. It was the people on Kettle's farm that helped Thorfinn find his will to live again. Just when we thought we would never see Askeladd again, he makes one more appearance in Thorfinn's fever dream that he has after a brief violent encounter with the farmhands. Thorfinn sees Askeladd in a place that he describes as the final destination for warriors. Askeladd is positioned on top of a pillar above the fighting that's happening down below. To me, this could represent two different things. One could be how Askeladd had always stood out to Thorfinn amongst anyone in his group, or how Askeladd viewed himself above the other Vikings as his violent actions were always a means to an end to protect his home country. Askeladd reminded Thorfinn to not waste his life moping and to continue his path to become a true warrior. In the end, Askeladd and Thorfinn have a very undefinable relationship. Thorfinn spent most of his time with Askeladd despising him. Askeladd was mostly annoyed by Thorfinn's constant attempts at revenge, but was able to see himself a bit in Thorfinn. Askeladd ended up being one of Thorfinn's greatest mentors that encouraged him to give himself a better life. When first meeting, Askeladd and Canute couldn't have been more of opposites, and yet their backgrounds were quite similar. Both came from childhoods that were filled with hardships that stemmed from their problematic fathers, which looking back, I think problematic might be a bit of an understatement to describe a slave owner and a deadbeat dad who tried multiple times to set up the death of his son. It's like if you hopped on Twitter and tried to cancel Vlad the Impaler for everything he's ever done despite being dead for 600 years. Continuing on, Askeladd is definitely thrown off by the young prince's appearance. How Canute is visualized directly contradicts what one may assume in this universe how an heir of the Danish throne would look like. Another content creator named Ashathar HS created a very well-written video on how the topic of masculinity is handled within the world of Vinland Saga. Most men in Vinland Saga, especially the Vikings, are obsessed with the idea of war and combat connecting to the belief in Valhalla in Norse religion. Canute, however, was the complete opposite of these traditional and <coughs> toxic uh, masculine values. Canute not only had a somewhat feminine appearance that even the other characters commented on, he was also extremely anxious and timid, acting somewhat like a child, not being able to speak to anyone besides his retainer Ragnar, who also served as his main father figure since King Swain was like, you know, kind of shit. Hell, Canute was Christian and didn't even follow the Norse religion in any way. In the eyes of the Vikings, however, Askeladd was the complete opposite. Despite being a short king, Askeladd represented the ideal Viking with his brutal strength and calculated tactics that helped assist him in many battles and raids on villages. However, in reality, Askeladd despised the Danish men that he was constantly surrounded by and was kind of using his Viking lifestyle as a means to someday be able to protect Wales. So Canute and Askeladd were able to relate as both the young prince and the experienced battle master hate the Viking lifestyle. While Askeladd was thrown off by his initial experience with Canute, he becomes intrigued by the prince when he begins to crack after Askeladd and his men raided and killed everyone in the village. After this, Askeladd believed that Canute could use some character development and he knows exactly how to do it it's time to play every anime fan's favorite game, Kill That Paternal Figure! Welcome back to Kill That Paternal Figure. Today's contestant is Ragnar. Now audience, do you think Ragnar will be A, shot, 
B, exploded, or C, stabbed. If you guess C, then you are correct. So after Askeladd instills the dead dad stereotype onto Canute, Canute begins to change which makes sense since he's, you know, fucking traumatized by the death of the one authority figure that actually cared about him. But to Askeladd, you call it trauma, he calls it character development. It's very clear that the death of Ragnar forces Canute to mature very quickly, to the point where he's brave enough to confront Thorkel and not even flinch for even a moment. This is when Askeladd decides to tell Canute about his involvement in Ragnar's death. Canute is clearly angered by this news, but then decides to hold his tongue against Askeladd, quite the opposite of how Thorfinn acted with Askeladd. But we'll get to that later. From here on, Askeladd and Canute work together to have the best outcome for both of them, with Askeladd wanting Wales to be safe, and Canute wanting to not be assassinated, and both wanting King Swain dead. Later on, during a dinner that was meant for to be something for Canute, I don't really remember and I can't like double check, I don't know, the editor put it on the screen why they had a dinner. Escalade one shot at King Swain and then just goes full on dynasty warrior mode on a bunch of guards, making this four for four on father murder. See, this was all according to Kekaku <laughs> to get rid of King Swain as the king had previously announced the invasion of Wales. So Askeladd feigns madness in order to give Canute the opportunity to kill him and claim the throne. And after his hesitancy, Canute is able to take out the coolest motherfucker. While Askeladd and Canute seem to be complete opposites during their first meeting, the path of each of their growth into leaders almost perfectly mirroring each other from the troubling childhoods to their first of many kills that triggered their cycle. Of violence. Now, you guys are probably thinking, but pancakes, you forgot about this. Oh, pancakes, you forgot about that. Guess what? I didn't. Unless I did, then please kindly let me know in the comments. Please, kindly. But the stuff I haven't talked about yet, I was saving it to talk about the big one, the parallel storytelling between Canute and Thorfinn. Before I get into that, I would like to take a moment of silence for our lost best boy, Askeladd. So it's very clear after Thorfinn and Canute first meet that they are meant to be foils for each other. Despite both being the same age and both having childhoods filled with hardships, the environments and the people that they were surrounded by growing up certainly had an impact on how they would behave and act as they were growing up into the characters we meet in season one. While he had to deal with the struggles of being a pawn in the royal family and having a father that didn't care for him, Canute grew up in a very sheltered environment with people that care about him, such as Ragnar and his brother Harold, rarely ever witnessing the gruesome violence that was happening all throughout his country. Meanwhile, Thorfinn had been on the battlefield since the age of six, and during that time had witnessed every terrible possible thing that could be committed by humanity. So it's no wonder why these two didn't really get along at all when they first met. Thorfinn clearly dislikes Canute from the jump, being disinterested in being nice to the prince and even calling him out for being too pathetic to be a leader amongst his own people. Which, yeah, Canute is kind of wimpy as he's unable to speak or even barely look at anyone that isn't Ragnar. However, it's Thorfinn's constant glares and demeaning comments towards Canute that finally causes Canute to finally speak up. While Thorfinn is a massive dick to Canute, it was also probably him that directly encouraged Canute to have a voice amongst the Danes since he tries to connect with the one person there that he can relate to on some level, with Thorfinn being the same age as Canute. As I mentioned previously, Canute begins to evolve more into an outspoken person, while Thorfinn kind of just stays as his normal angsty self and still doing what Askeladd wants with the hopes of getting that revenge duel. Soon before Ragnar is killed, Canute and Thorfinn are able to connect on a mutual level. After Thorfinn catches a rabbit, Canute and Ragnar invite him to share a meal and cook the rabbit he caught. He originally just kind of give them his standard fuck off attitude, but upon learning that Canute and Ragnar planned on making an actual meal with the rabbit rather than just straight up cooking it and eating it, but it's the power of seasoning and vegetables from Canute's cooking that allows Thorfinn to be able to finally let his guard down and actually enjoy a meal. Interestingly, 
The only times we see Thorfinn show any form of happiness after his father's death is when he's able to have a proper meal, such as this and the meal he had with the Englishwoman. It can be assumed that Thorfinn rarely enjoys meals. Well, he doesn't really enjoy anything, but I would imagine that most of the time when Thorfinn eats, it's usually just him by himself eating whatever he caught on his own or being around people he despises. Unlike Canute, who's probably only ever had nice meals his whole life. But not only does this scene show that Thorfinn doesn't fucking know anything about seasoning, it also shows how focused on his hatred that he's been all his life. All Thorfinn knew since he was six years old was how to fight and how to survive. So why would he ever bother to learn how to cook food past the point where, you know, it's wouldn't be raw. It's no Canute did have the time to learn how to cook properly, probably because he wasn't so absorbed with getting revenge all the time. Unlike some people, this kind of shows that Thorfinn never really was able to have normal things like hobbies and such because he was so consumed by his trauma and getting revenge, unlike Canute, and it's really sad. We forget about it sometimes, but Thorfinn and Canute are really just kids that were harmfully affected by the world around them. So of course after this, Ragnar gets one-shotted, dies, and Canute is now sad. Fast forward to Canute learning about Askeladd setting up and killing Ragnar. Again, Canute is clearly angry with Askeladd and is probably writing a 20 paragraph twit longer in his head, but holds back his feelings in order to keep working alongside Askeladd something Thorfinn can't do. For the rest of the season, Askeladd and Canute cooperate with one another to get Canute on the throne. Unlike some people, eventually Thorfinn and Askeladd have their last fight, and Thorfinn gets his ass kicked since Askeladd is used to beating this dude up. After the fight, Askeladd tells Canute and Thorfinn about how he killed his father, basically giving them a how-to guide on how to kill your sworn enemy. Man's Askeladd basically said, this is how you fucking kill me, and it was literally an open book quiz that Canute passed with flying colors, but Thorfinn's dumbass is too stubborn to hear Askeladd out. So of course, Thorfinn is never able to get his revenge because Canute is the one that puts Askeladd down, which just so happens to be Canute's first kill. Now, obviously Thorfinn is pissed that he wasn't the one to take out Askeladd and attempts to throw hands with Canute leaving a cut on his face before being restrained. It's this very moment where Thorfinn is pulled away, his face softens, and he drops his father's knife, is where Thorfinn's cycle of violence ends. But this is also where Canute's cycle of violence begins. When Thorfinn slashes Canute's cheek with his knife, he essentially passes his violent behavior onto the prince. Now, that wraps up season one, which leads into season two, where Thorfinn is now in Farmville. So after Thorfinn tried to swing on Canute, Canute put his ass into slavery, and Thorfinn kind of just became numb because he doesn't know how to live without being fueled by his own hatred. With the separation of Thorfinn and Canute, we see a large change in both of their characters over the course of five years. At the start of season two, Thorfinn is an empty man, being a shell of his former self. However, it's the people that Thorfinn meets on Kettle's farm, such as Einar, Arnheid, old dude and snake that's able to help him become a better, kinder man who believes that violence should only be used as a final resort. He essentially turned his life completely around, but still acknowledges the wrongs of his youth. Canute, on the other hand, is committing war crimes. So Canute believes that he's the one that could create a peaceful world, which sounds nice in theory. But bro is literally poisoning anyone who could potentially take the throne away from him and threatening anyone who doesn't want to assist him. Dude even killed his own brother, Harold, just so he could secure England under his control. His brother that cared about him, mind you. Now, Canute isn't completely heartless. It's very clear that his actions are eating away at him with how the head of King Swain haunts him. Plus, he even prevents his men from... <clears throat> doing bad things to prisoners of war, which are usually women. So Canute may have gone against the Geneva Convention codes, but at least he respects women. It's interesting how when Thorfinn and Canute first met in season one, they were opposites in the sense that Canute was a pacifist too scared to even look directly at people. And Thorfinn is, you know, killing people with no remorse for the sake of killing one dude. But here in season two, where their stories have almost done a complete 180. Now, it isn't a complete flip as both Thorfinn and Canute have their own forms of guilt that they're dealing with, 
Thorfinn is dealing with the pain of killing a lot of people and finally learning what it means to be a true warrior. Canute is doing his best to create peace under his rulership by any means possible, even if it means to kill the few in order to achieve peace under his control. So while no longer being complete opposites, Thorfinn and Canute definitely have opposing mindsets. So in the second half of season two, Canute wants the farmland that the Kettles own. So what does this man do? Creates a convoluted plan that somehow leads to the Kettle Boys committing several murders and after the Kettles dip, Canute is given cause to invade the farm. All jokes aside, it's not like the plan didn't make sense. Like, Canute definitely knew how bloodthirsty Thorgil is. Besides, I think this kind of plan is something Askeladd would have come up with, using his own men's violent tendencies against them, getting exactly what both of them want. So, Thorfinn and Canute finally meet again after five years. Canute is very taken aback by not only seeing Thorfinn, but also seeing him being the one trying to negotiate peace between Canute's men in the farm. Not only is Thorfinn the one negotiating, he's also willingly letting another man beat the crap out of him just so he could talk to Canute, something young Thorfinn certainly wouldn't have done. It's also in this scene that we learn that Canute was the one that put Thorfinn in slavery, showing his younger self's passiveness as King Canute would have most likely just killed Thorfinn in that moment. Both of them then finally speak with one another, and Thorfinn is all like, hey dude, can you leave the farm? And then Canute is all like, nah. And then Thorfinn is like, okay, then I'm just gonna dip. And then Canute's like, wait, actually? And then Thorfinn's like, yeah. And then Canute is like, well, shit, not if I leave first. In their conversation, it's very clear how much both of them had changed, and Canute recognizes that the most. Here, Thorfinn is, battered and bruised, standing in front of a man he used to have no respect for, and even tried to kill him at one point, asking for peace. Not just for the farm's sake, but for Canute's men's sake as well, stating that the only people that should be fighting are Canute and Kettle. That's why he didn't fight back against the dude that punched him for 100 times because to Thorfinn, he had no reason to fight that guy, especially since they only met that day. As Thorfinn put it, he has no enemies, and thus no reason to fight Canute's men. In this moment, Thorfinn finally understood what his father told him all those years ago and is able to become a true warrior. Canute is very much taken aback by Thorfinn's passive attitude, but is eventually able to appreciate it admiring the fact that Thorfinn can be able to become a peaceful individual after growing up around such violent men. And just maybe, Canute could become a peaceful man too. As of the end of season two in the anime, we don't fully know if Canute remains true to his words, but we can assume so since he leaves Kettle's farm and cancels his plan to seize other farmlands. But I don't know, maybe in season three we cut back in to Canute and he's just like, haha, I was lying, then commits many war crimes. All jokes aside, Thorfinn and Canute's storylines perfectly parallel each other as we see two children affected by the violent nature of the world and people around them that cause them to get themselves involved in the cycle of violence, only to finally be able to learn peace and how a true warrior acts. Finland Saga has mastered the art of parallel storytelling, as it perfectly takes three of the central characters and is able to have each of their storylines align with similar themes and character arcs. Thorfinn, Canute, and Askeladd each impact one another and are able to reflect elements of one another's stories. So what did we learn from this video? Blonde people will fucking kill you.